Hello everyone and welcome to this, another episode of GDDV501, Lighting and Rendering. My name is Kasanis. Guys, this is really the start of this particular series and the beginning of the course at Centennial College. The first episode, all we really did is took a look at what you can expect to do within this particular course. Today, we're going to discuss the idea of cinematography. What exactly is cinematography for games? All right, everyone, let's get started. Cinematography for games, the asynchronous learning portion of this particular course. So today, we're going to try and answer two questions. What exactly is cinematography? And how does cinematography fit into video games? If I asked you right now those two questions, a lot of people, their typical answer is cinematography is film. Cinematography is about movies. It's about film. And they wouldn't be incorrect. In fact, the majority of people, if asked what is cinematography, will, will agree with that. It's about film. And Unity agrees with you as well. In fact, Unity has made a push towards the idea of film utilizing their engine. There are three parts to a video called Atom. Atom Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. Atom Part 1 was originally created with Unity by the Unity team, whereas Atom Part 2 and 3 are made by an external studio, again, using Unity. So Unity itself, the game engine Unity, is now being utilized for things like entertainment and for film. Atom is an older film now. It's been around for a little while. Uh, 2 and 3 came out a little more recently, but again, all of this is, is a little bit older. We'll take a look at some examples later on of more modern or, or more recent, at least, uh, examples of Unity being used to create entertainment or video. Let's take a really quick look at part of the short film Atom. When asked about cinematography, this is what most people think cinematography is used for. Film, some type of narrative delivery. And again, like I said, they're not wrong. It, this, is, this is definitely cinematography. We have a hyper-realistic 3D film here, obviously not live actors, but its, it's intention is to entertain, its intention is to be engaging, its intention is to deliver narrative of some kind, right? And we're doing all of that through visual means. There is audio associated with this film as well. I've just got the audio turned off so you could hear my awesome voice <laughs> for the entirety of this actual film. We're not going to watch the whole thing. But that's... That's the reason for cinematography. That's, that's what most people think the reason for cinematography is, to deliver narrative of some kind. So Unity is investing fairly heavily in the idea of game engine utilized for creating entertainment, not strictly games and not strictly apps, but for entertainment in general, for creating things like film or, or, or short films, narrative-driven plots, that kind of thing. If you head over to the Unity website, you can take a look and find the Unity Awards at the time that I made this particular video, the Unity Awards for 2019 were up and available. Maybe when you're watching this, 2020 awards are available. I'm not sure. But regardless, head over to Unity and take a look at what's being produced under the media and entertainment category. It used to be called film, and now it's called media and entertainment. Obviously, it's broader. But you can see that Unity is really, by adding this additional additional category into their awards, Unity is really pushing the idea that their engine can be used for things other than strictly games and apps. So the winner last year in 2019 was Nathan's Island, and it's an animated series by Nathan Thomas. Go on over and check it out. In fact, take a look at everything that's been, that's been made with Unity. There's a ton of really great stuff in there. There's often discussion about whether Unity or, or Unreal are better engines or, or something else, whether these are, there's better engines out there. Sometimes people think that you, there's things you can't do with one engine or you can, you, know, you can do with another. And I don't believe this to be true. An engine is a tool. I mean, obviously there's limitations to any engine, but for the things that, that we're doing, as you're probably, who's listening to this, you're probably a student or you're probably an ind independent uh, uh, game maker, something like that, and Unity is going to do everything that you need it to do. Go ahead over there, head over to the Unity Awards and check out exactly what's been done. It's really, really impressive stuff. So in all those previous examples and everything we've discussed so far, we really looked at cinematography in its traditional use, in the creation of film or media or entertainment of some kind. And that's what most people think cinematography is, film for the telling of narrative, for the telling of story. But what exactly is it? What does it actually mean to say cinematography? Well, cinematography is the art of motion picture photography. The art of moving pictures is what it is. 
And cinematography includes everything that is included within the frame, everything that the audience is seeing, the viewer is seeing, everything. It's used to tell a visual story. It's supposed to evoke a specific mood or feeling in the viewer. We utilize shot composition. We utilize good shot composition tools that are going to allow us to create a specific mood or feeling in our viewer. That's extremely important, right? That's what film is about. It's either for delivering information or it is for telling a story, but it's used to deliver something. And we want people to feel something when they watch whatever it is we've created, right? If you think about the films that you've enjoyed, that you maybe they're a comedy, you laugh. If it's a horror, you're scared. It evokes these particular feelings within you. When you see a an image of a dark and stormy, you know, wave rocked island with rain, uh, you get this oppressive mood. You understand how gloomy that particular location is, right? It's giving you information through through visual means it's giving you information and making you feel a certain way it's creating a specific mood inside of you and that's super important every single shot within a film or every single shot within a game even is supposed to be both functional and artistic it's supposed to do something and it's supposed to be beautiful or evoke some type of mood or feeling within you so what does this actually mean saying something is both functional and artistic well Functional means that the shot serves a particular purpose. It's there for some reason. Now, regardless of whether we're talking about film or we're talking about game, you have to understand why you are including a particular camera or particular frame or particular shot within your scene. Why are you doing it? What is it supposed to do? Is it supposed to give information? Is it supposed to set the scene? What exactly is the purpose of that particular shot? Understanding the functionality of that shot is going to go a long way in helping you create that shot properly. And when I say it's artistic, that means that a shot is compelling to look at. You want to grab people's attention. The reason why people play games, the reason why people watch movies is to become immersed within that film. And using artistic means will help them become immersed in your film. They're going to want to watch it, right? They're going to want to watch it. In traditional film, a passive medium, the cinematographer has time and the ability to set up shots based on good composition, and they're able to deliver that functionality they want to create. They're able to deliver the artistic, the artistic ideas that they have. They're able to do so because it's a passive medium. We have no control uh, as an audience. We have no control over where we're, where we're looking, right? We can't look around the entire, <laughs> the entire area. We can see only what the cinematographer has given us to look at. And the cinematographer is able to direct your gaze throughout the show or throughout the film that they've created. They're able to direct your gaze across the entire frame utilizing good shot composition. When the cinematographer has created that good shot composition, we will become immersed within, those, within the experience. You know, we become completely lost in the experience of the film we're watching. We lose track of time, just like we do with video games, right? We become immersed in the entertainment. We are watching this, we become engaged with the activity we're doing and we lose time, we lose track of time completely, right? And this is the same thing that happens with video games. I know this is a third year course and you've probably had the idea of immersion drilled into you. I really hope you have. <laughs> That that's our goal is to have people come, become immersed within our games. But in exactly the same way, a cinematographer, through good shot composition, is able to aid in immersion of the viewer. We want to do the same thing as, as game designers. So what then is the use of cinematography in games? It sounds like it's very similar to that of film, right? Let's take a look. In games, again, we are trying to create a mood or feeling within our player. Now, just because this is an interactive medium doesn't mean that things have changed. We still want to evoke that particular mood or feeling within our player, right? We're trying to make our player feel something towards our game, whether it's excitement, whether they're feeling high energy, whether we've created a, a horror game and they want to be scared. We're trying to create that particular mood or feeling. And in creating that particular mood, we're also telling a story, right? We're telling our narrative by using the, these visual means, environmental storytelling, we are creating a story. We're building narrative into our games. We're giving our players a reason for why they're doing what they're doing throughout our game, right? We're putting context to the mechanics. Mechanics without context, context is relatively boring, right? You might have a great mechanic. If it's sitting there doing nothing and there's no context behind it, maybe your players aren't going to become as engaged. Maybe they don't care about those particular mechanics regardless of how good they are. Adding that mood or evoking a feeling within your player through cinematography is going to go a long way to make sure they're enjoying your game.
Now, just like film, every single frame of our game must be functional and artistic, right? We definitely need to deliver something to our player. Why are we including a particular camera in in our game? Why are we using these particular camera mechanics within our game? What function does that particular camera serve? We have to understand that before we can actually add in our cameras in any way. Understanding our camera is extremely important. It has to be artistic. Again, like I said, that art within our games is what adds context to our game. It's what creates the world in which this game is taking place. It's going to help with immersion. I know a lot of people say, you know, gray box, if a gray box is fun, then, then the game is going to be fun. And that's probably true. <laughs> that's absolutely true. Your gray box has to be fun in order for you to be able to make a fun game. But as soon as you start to add in that context, that art, everything becomes better, right? Whatever art style you've chosen, if it's attractive, it's going to aid in immersion for your player. Obviously, as I've said many times, cinematography in-game has a direct effect on player immersion, right? You, if, it's, if it's well done and they're not looking at the production of your game, they're actually playing your game, then they're going to become further immersed within your game. And again, cinematography in games could serve a very traditional purpose of actually moving your narrative forward, right? Everything you, you show within your frame is going to move your narrative forward. Now, yes, you could actually have in there uh, just pure cutscenes or pure narrative points, and that's obviously going to move your narrative forward. But with good visual storytelling, the entire time your player is playing your game, you're going to be giving them narrative. You're going to be giving them context and lore within your game. Now, the important thing about games, the big difference between games and films, is we have to be able to do all of that in an interactive medium. And that makes it a lot more difficult. A lot of times within our games, players have control of the camera. Players can move the camera in different ways. And as soon as the player has control over their camera, where they're going, they're going to have control over what they're seeing as well. And that makes it much more difficult for us to set up proper composition in every single frame. If a player has free reign over what they're looking at, they may miss entire narrative points. They may miss very important information. We have to understand whenever we add camera mechanics that the function behind those camera mechanics is also about ensuring good gameplay. So understanding your camera is extremely important in an interactive medium like, like games. I'd like to go on to a little bit about narratology and ludology. So narratology and ludology is an old academic discussion. <laughs> In fact, I don't even know if it has a place within this, even within our thinking anymore at all. Uh, it used to be a debate whether or not we should study video games within a, within a particular means. So narratology means you are taking a, a, an approach towards video games as if they're a narrative piece and that any of the tools that we have for studying narrative can be used to study video games as well. Ludology suggests that narrative has no real impact on the game at all and that studying games should be more about the mechanics and the systems of the game and how those interact together. And this was a debate that was going on for a little while uh, within the academics of game. And, and I don't even know if it's a real debate, but like I said, I'm bringing it up here just so you are familiar with these particular words, uh, narratology and ludology. So uh, with ludology, it suggests that the game experience is made up of three things and three things only, the rules, the game world, and the game experience. And that it's the player's actions, so the mechanics that the players have, that's all that matters as far as game experience is concerned and studying games is concerned. That players' actions are what actually makes up the idea of game. A narratologist suggests that video games are uh, a storytelling medium and they can be studied in that way. And ludologists underlying mechanics and the rule set. That's kind of what the argument between those two ideas are. And ultimately, you might ask yourself, well, you might have heard this and think, well, I'm a ludologist or I'm a narratologist. And really and truly, I don't think it really matters. If you fall on one side of the debate or the other, it, it's fine. <laughs> You're still going to make good games regardless of which side of the debate that you fall on. I personally think it's both, right? And, and we said that ludology is about the game world, the game world you're creating. And a game world is narrative. So to say that we can completely suggest that one is not important and the other is, in my opinion, is a little bit ridiculous, right? The, the understanding of, of the underlying lore uh, within the world and, and the story it creates is extremely important. But having good mechanics and understanding how your systems work together is extremely important. So in my opinion, there's no right answer. If you fall on one side or the other, awesome. But I don't think there's really any, any real correct answer to this at all. 
In this course, of course, we are looking at game cinematography, cinematography for games. So we are kind of taking a narratological approach to what we're doing here, and that's fine. We're, we're studying it from a, a cinematic point of view. So just take that as you may, right? We are going to be studying it uh, using cinematography tools to break down the visuals that we're seeing within our game. So really what it comes down to, cinematography for games, cinematography is everything your player sees in the frame. So whatever the camera is framing, that is your cinematography. <laughs> All of your visuals must be functional and artistic. Proper camera and camera mechanics are extremely important. In fact, my recommendation to you is that you understand your camera and the camera mechanics very early in the development cycle of your game. It's not enough to simply have an idea of, of the mechanics within your game if you don't understand how you're going to be delivering that information to your player, right? Understanding the camera mechanics is going to mean that your player is going to have a better experience and they're going to be able to better understand your mechanics within your particular game. Your job as a game cinematographer is to create mood or evoke feelings. This is probably the biggest point. I'm going to hammer this home throughout this entire series. Mood or feeling, that is your job. And you're going to create that mood or that, those feelings through shot composition. It's very difficult to do because we do have an interactive medium of some kind, meaning that the player may be able to more easily change what they're seeing within the scene through mechanics that you've offered them uh, associated with the camera. Uh, they may skip over certain things. <laughs> they may skip over your narrative points if you've given them uh, appropriate mechanics to be able to do so. So this is much more difficult than simply saying, just make it look pretty, right? We can do that in film. We can just simply put stuff on the screen and the player and the viewers have no choice but to watch those particular visuals. In games, it's not always the case. So that's the really important thing. It's in an interactive medium, you have to understand that they might not, if your players aren't being led to where they're supposed to go, they might not ever see the information you want them to see. And lastly, we have to understand that visuals will have a direct impact on the player's immersion levels. By giving them functional as well as artistic shots and visuals, we're going to ensure that our players remain immersed within our game. If they're lost within a particular mechanic, game mechanic, or excuse me, a camera mechanic, if they're lost in there, they've lost their player, whatever it is they've done, they're no longer going to be looking at the game itself, and instead they're going to be looking at the production of your game, right? They're going to get confused, they're going to start looking at the production, they're going to get lost in what they're doing, and they're going to lose uh, those immersive levels they had. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that. And that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, it was a short one. I just really want to discuss the idea of what cinematography was, and I don't know if we answered it, but by the end of this course, we absolutely will have. All right, everyone, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down below in the comments if you did. A thumbs up or thumbs down is always appreciated. All right, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.